Hi guys. Oh. A little nervous on this side of the podium. <laughs> and I, I spent today getting tons of handouts because I felt a little pressure at following uh, Pastor Steve. <laughs> So I have a few things to pass out, and then um, Pastor Jean, right? What's, what's your last name? Wilkins. Wilkins um, came tonight, and he has a testimony he's going to share, which I feel like may be strategic for why God has you here, maybe to release that okay. tonight. So really good for that worship talk too. <sighs> okay, so why don't you come and share while sure. I start passing out? Um, This past month, my wife Suzanne and I had an opportunity to take a cruise to Canada. Somebody has to do it, okay? And uh, normally when we go on a cruise, we contact the front desk and they give me permission to do a Bible study in the chapel on the cruise. And so we began that, and it started with, the chapels are small there, uh, so we started with about eight people, but by the end of the cruise, there were, there were people sitting on the floor because there was no room left. You know, and that was just an amazing thing. And so I had also asked permission to hold a Sunday worship service for the whole ship. All 2,000 people, if we could get them out of the casino long enough to come to church. But anyway. <laughs> uh, but uh, we tried to do the Bible studies when we were at sea. So it didn't interfere with people going offshore to the various cities. Long story short, we planned to have the church service at 4 o'clock on a Sunday because it was a day that we were in port. Then God sent Hurricane Philippe and changed the whole navigational direction wow. of the ship. <laughs> okay? Now, I didn't know this, all right? Uh, Saturday night before the, the Sunday we were going to have the church service, the, the coordinator called me and said, Pastor Jean, can we give, give, put you in another room because we're not stopping. In order to get back to New York City in time, we can't stop at, at Nova Scotia. We just got to, you know. So I said, sure. So they scheduled the service for 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. And they said, we're going to give you the nightclub called The Bliss. I said, okay. So anyway, uh, I had prepared my heart for that. But I also uh, prepared my heart to believe that God would send somewhere between 40 and 60 people. So they set up 50 chairs and provided a microphone and everything. And we were all set. And by 10.40, the 50 chairs were filled. By 11.05, there were 180 people in the nightclub, standing room only. It was the most amazing thing to see God do that. And, and it, it, was, uh, it was just a unique time in the sense that God surprised everybody. A lot of the people in the, in the daily Bible studies that we held, I guess they must have told everybody they ate with. Or whatever, but but it was, it was. I almost couldn't preach. It was so humbling because I, I did not expect that many. And it was, it was a sample of the body of Christ. There were people there from all over the world, and there were there were people there from every ethnic and racial background. Even a few Canadians snuck in, you know. And it was one of the most amazing things. And God just touched everyone. Uh, they hung around after the service just to chat. Uh, several, there were several uh, people that were from uh, the Church of the Latter-day Saints. They wanted to know about the Holy Spirit and how He works and how God did this whole thing with the service. So then they'll end it like this. What happened later that Sunday, we're having dinner and the coordinator comes over and said, how'd your service go? I had another meeting. And I told her and she said, that's it. You give me your business card. I give you my business card. The next time you're on this ship, email me three weeks before we sail and we'll provide everything you need. Yeah. And I thought I was just going on a cruise. <laughs> and it was. The cruise, the cruise was awesome. I mean, it really was. But this was like icing on the cake, but it was such a supernatural thing. I mean, they, it really, it was literally standing room only in this nightclub. They, were, they weren't, but... but the next group that came in probably would have had to sit on the bar. That's how many people God sent. Wow. <laughs> that is awesome. Honey, make sure you hit... Um, yeah. 
With the New Testimony. You know, it's so cool because God's plan is always so much bigger than what our plan is, right? So much bigger. And if you think of the multiplication that happens with just that 180 people and each person, how that's going to just multiply into the nations. Wow. Woo. That's awesome. So <laughs> All right, I'm just going to be honest with you. Um, I tend to go on bunny trails. Pastor Steve has been helping me to not go on so many bunny trails. Of course, I've already thought of three listening to your message. <laughs> so I'm going to try to stay on track. I have given to you some, um, this particular page that I gave you. These are my notes, okay? You might understand. It might help you follow. It might not. It's the creative side of me. It's hard to be really super organized, but I'm really trying. Um, the topics that we're going to cover in these um, few weeks, and this is also subject to change, seeing what God wants to do, what the Holy Spirit says, but we're going to talk a lot about your identity, knowing who you are, knowing who he is and who you are in him. A kingdom mindset. Um, I actually have a really fun test we're going to do next week. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever done the prince versus pauper test. It's, um, I don't want to say it's fun because it's like, ouch, ooh, oh. Uh, do you love the sale rack? Ooh, yes. <laughs> um, but it also helps reveal whether we're really understanding the kingdom mindset and what, what God um, has for us. Um, love, the prophetic, uh, releasing supernatural, which is kind of the whole theme throughout, um, the apostolic prophetic culture, because one of the visions that uh, Pastor Josh has, which I am so excited about, is shifting the culture here. Um, We'll go into that a little bit more in detail, but shifting from a going to church on Sunday mindset to an apostolic culture, which is what the first century, century church was founded. A culture of honor, which is one of my favorites. And then my absolute favorite will be encountering heaven. So I've, I have requested, we're hoping it works out for us to move into the sanctuary so we can have carpet time for encountering heaven. So... I know some people are laughing, are we sure? <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start with a supernat living a supernatural lifestyle. Um, any of you that have been very frequently to either the healing class on Friday or the Supernatural Sunday, I apologize if you hear some of my same old stories. I'm working on getting some new ones, but it's a process, but uh, there's one story that I just need to share before we start. Um, I listened to a teaching by, um, he's the pastor over Jesus Culture, uh, Banning. Um, Leipsch, Le what's his last name? Something it's difficult to pronounce, but Banning, we'll call him Pastor Banning. <laughs> and he talked about when he was so nervous when he got up to preach. I, no. It's not, no, his first name is Banning. Banning leaps something. Okay. Yeah, he was teaching one of the courses I was taking. And he said he was so nervous the first time he got up there to preach, which I'm feeling that right now. And he said, God, please, please let me be a great preacher tonight. Just tonight, let me be a great preacher. And God said, well, if that's your goal, you're going to fail. And God said to him, be a son. And he's like, okay, I know how to be a son. I can be a son. He said, you're going to be a great son. And he said to God, I have to think of another word because it might not be appropriate being filmed on, on Facebook. But um, he said, okay, God, I'll just be a son. But please, please don't let me be terrible. <laughs> you can interject whatever word you want to that he actually used. <laughs> so today I'm going to get up here and instead of being a great teacher, I'm just going to be a daughter. 
it's, it's still, I go through the same anxiety. <laughs> And, you know, I do it all over the world. Those that, I don't know if most of you know, I travel all the time and I'm speaking. But here's the key. I have an interpreter, so I get to take a few minutes while she's saying what I said and review my notes. <laughs> and think about how eloquently to say the next thing. So <laughs> it's a little different. Okay, so in Living the Supernatural Lifestyle, we're going to be talking about so many crazy, crazy things during this because... We serve a radical, supernatural God, yes? Yeah. When you read through the book of Acts, things get crazy. Now, how many of us live a life like the book of Acts? Anybody? I'm not there. <laughs> but yet, it's written because that's supposed to be the model for normal Christianity. And yet, when was the last time that I raised the dead? So what I want to tell you is, um, have any of you ever experienced like um, people in the supernatural that are just really out there and you look at them and you're going, yeah, no, I don't think that, that I want that. What do you, anybody? Yes? No? Maybe? What? What? You're one of those people? <laughs> well, I want, to, I want to correct you in that because what we think because we are the crazy ones, <laughs> we still have a foundation of the Bible. When it gets off is when we start taking experience that, does it, that contradicts the word of God. I don't want to say that every experience you're ever going to have, you're going to see necessarily in scripture, but it's never going to contradict. I mean, there is a psalm, if anybody can think of it, I can Google it and get it to you later. Um, where God says he can basically do whatever he wants. Bill Johnson uses that all the time for something that he doesn't quite understand. Well, God can do whatever he wants. But what we want to stay in this class is really lining up the supernatural with the Bible. And I just want to say it's a pretty high standard for the supernatural. I really don't understand people that say that these things really shouldn't be happening when I'm reading and I'm going, gee, Paul went to heaven. Hmm. Why are they telling me unless we have access? We are already seated in heavenly places, but that's another lesson. The second thing that we're going to do is revelatory. Now, I made up a few words here, okay, <laughs> just to make a point. Foundational, revelational, really not a word, it got underlined. <laughs> Experiential, practical, and potential. <laughs> I know, I'm a little crazy. You're just going to get used to me in a day or two. <laughs> so, the foundational is how we line it up with scripture, that it does not contradict scripture. The revelational I love because there's a scripture, and I, I learned this in a course from Patricia King. Um, I have it written here. Proverbs 25 says, It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but to search it out, to search out a matter is the glory of kings. So God hides things for us to dig into. Did you ever start reading and you just kind of had a little bit of a question. You know, what, are you, what are you saying there, God? And it causes you to dig deeper. And when you dig deeper, you get the revelation. And when you get the revelation, the next passage says, the secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things revealed belong to us. So once you get the revelation, you can have it. It's yours. And, I love this part, to us and to our children. So the things that you are going to get revelation of, some of you may very probably have all the revelation that I have in this, this course, I hope to be interactive, that I'm going to share what I've learned and you can share what you've learned so that we can all grow. Because if you have, you know, if Dana has a revelation that I haven't gotten yet and she shares it with me and then we start digging deeper, we can have it, right? How would we know 
that we can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover unless we had a revelation of it. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and sometimes God reveals it in layers because we're not always ready for the full revelation of it in the beginning. Um, an example, there's a scripture that I'm going to talk about um, a little later in Matthew 10 where it says, um, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead. Love it. Love that scripture, right? Anybody else with me? Did you ever think about what it means to cleanse a leper? It doesn't say heal a leper. I mean, that gets covered under heal the sick. Um, my first trip to India, I went to, uh, God told me I was going, well, it's actually my only trip to India. God said, I'm sending you to the leper colonies. And I went, oh my God. <laughs> what if I catch it? Something really twisted in that thinking. I'm going to pray for the sick. I believe in divine healing, and I'm afraid I'm going to catch it. <laughs> but um, I came out. I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> but cleanse the leper. What does that mean? No. It could be. That's true. But that's not, what, that's not the revelation I got, but it could be. Cleanse is to bathe someone. It's an intimate act. So people that are completely um, outcasts, you go and you love them and you hold them and you tell them they're beautiful and worthy. And not that I took them in and gave them a bath, but it was that love, that pouring out of love without fear. Bunny trail number one. <laughs> the word there meant is catharisma. Oh. And it's the same word that's used with the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all unrighteousness. That can hurt you. That's beautiful. And that's, what, that's, that's, that's beautiful. See? Revelation. <laughs> I have another word. Maybe you can answer a question that I have in my notes later. Oh, I knew God had you here for a reason. <laughs> Okay, the practical is how we get it to apply to our daily life. Oh, I skipped experiential. Sorry. <laughs> we need to experience God and the person of the Holy Spirit. We are going to open the opportunity to have personal encounters. Okay, we're going to have some time because I got the okay from Pastor Josh because it's the advanced class that we can go out there a little bit and allow the Holy Spirit to really move and take some time and hear from him and share what he's saying and, and get encouraged. Practical is how we implement it into our, our everyday life, and that is is something that's really important because this is living the lifestyle of the supernatural. So it needs to be our daily walk. Who we are needs to be how we act, how we present God, how we go to the grocery store, how we shop in Wawa. Um, I, I was in Wawa today, and it's one of the not as nice Wawa's, <laughs> I put it that way. It's in a little bit more of an oppressive area, a little depressed area. And so I was talking to this, the, the cashier here, and I said, how's your day going? She's going, oh, it's just been tough. Just while I'm buying my cup of coffee. And she says, it's just been tough. They just moved me over here from another store, and I feel like it is sucking the life out of me. And so what an opportunity God put right there for me to start to say, well, you know what? I'm going to pray for you because... I don't feel like God wants you to be pressed down in this. He wants you to come up here and change the atmosphere. Go for better. It doesn't have, just because we're in a bad area, doesn't mean the Wawa has to be bad. Let's bring it up like the rest of them. You know, meeting her where she's at, but still sharing that God is able, that God's not wanting her to be sucked into her situation, but he wants her to rise up and change the situation. Potential, a Miss Pam 
word. <laughs> uh, potential is because there is so much more. There is so much more than what I've experienced. I have experienced about that much of what the word says I can experience. And I'm going for more. Anybody with me? Who wants more? I want more. There's a great book, Randy Clark book, um, called There Must Be More. And when I read this book, and this is book, he talks about how he was a, a Baptist pastor. And he's like, but we don't fall on the floor. <laughs> We just don't do these things. And it was how God started to reveal himself to this, you know, he, I love how he says, just little old me. <laughs> and God wants to show that to us. He wants us to search for more. Because if we see more, we can have more. Right? I have a prophetic word. Did I hand out the prophetic word? Is there a page that says Ryan Johnson? No, I don't think so. I was really just, um, I got off of the Elijah list a while back, and I feel like it was a really timely word. I'm giving you a lot of things that you can take home and keep because I feel like that's going to help in case you have questions later. Um, if your mind tends to be like me, you uh, might need a little reminder now and then. Ryan Johnson Ministries, um, I was not familiar with him in, at all, and this came up on the Elijah list, and it was really intriguing. There's a, much more of it if you want to look um, for it, the whole... The whole article is, um, wait, I need the big letter one for me. Is there another one, Liz? Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, it was around uh, the end of August on the Elijah list, but if you Google it, you'll find it. It says, I, the Lord said to him, I need you to prepare yourself for the unexpected. And when I read that, I was like, that's a now word. We're living in a Kairos time. We talked about that a couple weeks ago at the Supernatural Sunday nights. Granted, it's not a powerful or life-changing statement, but it did make sense, though I was going to one place, he took me to another. You see... Many of you are about to see the hidden things, what we were just talking about, come to light again. There will be individuals who will begin presenting to you the words that they discovered. You will also come across prophetic words which you were never looking for, but they found you. It will be easy to pay little to no attention to these words, but they will be keys to unlock your region. Prepare yourself to come into agreement with the prophetic decrees of those who went before you. God is aligning the generations, I love that word, for a movement of the prophetic that will unlock signs, wonders, miracles, healing, salvation, and much more. These apostolic runners are breaking through that we may see the unity. Ephesians 4, and in this class we're going to spend a lot of time in Ephesians 4. We discover that the equipping of the saints and the building of the body is for unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. God is using a fivefold for the unity of generations, even the generations of those that have crossed into eternity. That was interesting. When the prophetic is spoken into the atmosphere, those words never cease to be until the moment of fulfillment. 
The runners or the messengers are breaking through and God has given you the authority to break open the seals to see the prophetic words released into their destiny. Get ready to open, agree, and see. That's a good word. Um, that's not specifically what he's talking about. He's talking about, um, I'm going to give you an example. Okay. Um, do you, have you ever heard of Bob Jones? Bob Jones is a, a prophet who's gone on to be with the Lord. Um, he declared, this, this particular prophecy was very important to me. When I tell you, you'll understand why. He prophesied that there would be the largest revival in history birthed out of Russia. Now, I spend a lot of time in Russia, and so when I read that word, later I found out that John Henry, the old prophet from China, had a very similar prophetic word about Russia in, I want to say the early 1900s, I believe he was alive. Anybody know for sure? No. Um, so, what this man is saying is that there's a time now that these prophetic words that we have not seen we can begin to declare them. Do you understand? Uh, okay. okay. We're going to get more into the prophetic later, so some of those questions that you still have may be answered. Um, also, there's a great class. Did they do the prophetic section of the class upstairs yet? Liz, do you know? The prophetic book? That would be a really good one to, to plug into because that's really um, a really interesting book they do. Identity. Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> Anybody else? Who are you? Anybody else? What are you? Who are you? Do you know who you are? Uh, we're going to play a game later. That'll be really interesting. Um, I want you to look at Romans 8 with me, please. Knowing who we are and who he is is crucial. I was going to say for the supernatural, but it's crucial for any type of life in Christ. And can I share from something from John 13? That was the key to Jesus being free to wash the disciples' feet. He knew who he was, he knew where he'd come from, and he knew where he was going. Amen. And, and that freedom allowed him, the Son of God, to wash the disciples' feet. He knew who he was. He knew where he, came from. where he came from and where he was going. That is really interesting. That is very... critical to our identity because if you don't know that, then there's a lot of ministry you can't do because you just won't be secure enough to do it. Mm-hmm. That's good. Romans 8. We're, we're treading on my favorite scripture of all time. You'll hear me say that a lot because I like them all. <laughs> um, we're going to start in verse 19. I have a funny story about verse 18 that starts with, I consider that our present suffering is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in you. Um, how many of you know that I'm a ballet teacher by trade? <laughs> I've taught ballet for 30 some odd years, maybe more, but I don't want to be that old. Um, anyway, so I used to have all the girls in point class with the shoes that you'd dance like this, and they would start crying, and their feet would bleed, and I would quote this scripture, do not consider your present suffering worthy to be compared to the glory that will be revealed in you. But anyway, this, this next line... Um, 
Jan, could you read it for us? 19? Um, start with just 19. Nineteen. Uh, for the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. Who are the children of God? All of creation is waiting for us to step into our identity, to know who we are. Go on and read 20 and 21. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope. Keep going, 21. Okay, 21. Um, that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and the glory of the children of God. That is so interesting to me. Um, I wasn't planning on this, but today when I was um, rereading some of the scriptures and I read that, it was like creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay. Well, this says, I believe this is still talking about when the children of God are revealed. I'm going to quote my my dear partner in crime, Damien Korea. Um, if we make heaven that we're waiting for everything till we get to heaven for the new earth, all of that, we've made death our savior. The Lord's prayer says, "On earth as it is in heaven." That's what we're praying. We're praying to have heavenly encounters here to bring the kingdom here but that's just uh, creation itself will be liberated we'll just ponder on that one <laughs> anybody have more revelation on that what do you think it's safe territory here what does yours say? Absolutely. That nature creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and corruption and gain an entrance into the glorious freedom of God's children. Wow. That's present and future. It's all. Are they talking about human beings? Are they talking about plants, animals? All creation. All creation. While we're still walking on this earth before the new earth. I'm just saying what it says. I'm not saying. We're just, this is where we are trying to dig into the secrets. Mm -hmm. Yes. But Jesus came to redeem us. Not to redeem us only for heaven, but to rede redeem us now. Right. Yeah. And is it possibly, perchance, because we as children of God have not tended to the garden? Oh, I understand that, but then, you know. It, do you think it's taking God by surprise? Oh, no. <laughs> well, this is one of those things that we just have to continue to seek the Lord for revelation. Huh? We don't have it. We don't know it all. He almost does. I'm really impressed. Thank you. <laughs> Creation. Well, we po poison our own body.
Mm -hmm. Sometimes, but you know what I feel like happens? I'm just speaking on my own understanding right now, is that sometimes we are so focused on what we see on the news, what we see around us, that we stop really seeing it from God's perspective. You know, he's not surprised by what's going on, and he's kind of saying, kids, wake up, come on, you got some work to do. Verse 23 says, not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. We are adopted as sons and daughters. And he's a good, good father, like the song. And I am loved by him. That alone blows my mind. I feel like, you know, I started thinking when I was preparing, like, this is the advanced class. We really should have our identity down by now, right? <laughs> and then I burst into laughter. <laughs> because I, so many times, I go back, I ha I'm, I'm a journaler. I love to write notes in a notebook. And um, not that anybody could ever read my scribble on the page, but so often I have read back and it's like, I really thought I knew who I was. And then God showed me this. And then years later, I really thought I knew who I was. <laughs> and over and over, God is reminding me, it's like I'm growing up in the spirit. Do you know, I, I, I was this little tiny little girl and then a little older and a little more mature and just I would say three years ago, I had an encounter with God, which I'm going to share at another class in depth, where God spoke to me, and it was the most amazing thing ever about who I was, and it just changed me forever. And I don't think that's it. I think probably in another little while, I'm going to need him to tell me again. It's on my next page, Pastor. <laughs> the word for is statism. It means an image burned on a subject. You know, let's skip over there right now because I have a question. That's exactly the, the, the scripture I wanted you to answer the question for me. Let me find which page it's on. Um, because actually we're going to be dealing with redeeming our imagination. Okay, in Ephesians 1.18, right, it says, I pray that the eyes, some passages say of your heart, some say of your understanding. When I looked it up in the concordance, they used two different words in the same passage. The ones that say of your heart, it has one translation, and the ones that say of your understanding, it has another translation. See, the Hebrews consider the heart a place of understanding. Yes. I, your, my word have I hid in my in heart. Mm -hmm. You're not, not in the organ, in that seat of understanding. It, it, the modern conception would be that what God wants to do, and what Paul was praying, yes. was that God would download an image of what those people were meant to be what we're meant to be. And Absolutely. Not yes. Or even our own image. You know, and, and, and when you see what you are called to be, it's, it's self revelatory, keep expanding. Then, then yes. You, you, you're just able to understand mm. how to live. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, if we get, yeah, it really means uh, like a download. Yes. To transform our minds, like yes. it says in, in you Romans. Know, yes. From my perspective, from your own or other, I mean, we, people love to shape us according to their image. 
Yes. Um, we're going to take the, we have to take the break in just a minute, right? Is it 7.20 we take the break? Um, hoping, I have a little game I want us to play, and it's about identity. And it's going to be kind of like speed dating in the prophetic realm. <laughs> I'll just leave you with that. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to play a little game. Now, when when we play it, I'm going to just give you the basic, basic prophetic guidelines. Um, what is a prophetic word? A lot of you have had this teaching before. What does it need to be? Edifying. Edifying. Comforting. Comforting. Building up. Pulling out the gold. Encouraging. We never, ever, ever, ever prophesy into their garbage. Okay? God wants to pull the gold out. Okay? And we're going to take a break, and then I'm going to explain to you why I gave you those guidelines. Okay? See you in, how long is the break? Ten minutes? Welcome back. <laughs> Kind of getting a feel for what it feels like to speak for two hours. Tell me if you get tired of hearing my voice for two straight hours. <laughs> the, we left off with talking about um, identity. Um, I take a course that's out of Global Legacy, which is part of Bethel from Redding, California, if any of you are familiar with that um, uh, school there. And I take this leadership course I'm in the second year of it and the first month of this this year was the whole month was based on do we believe what God says about us and on the surface I was like sure yeah and the wonderful thing with these particular courses is they dive right into the heart it's like really do you believe what God says about you and I'm going to be totally transparent that I struggled with this a lot. And I feel that it may be rooted in the teaching of humility, which is important, and too much pride, and how can I possibly believe these great things that God says that I'm going to do, and you know, I'm just this girl from Millmay, New Jersey. I think we had 400 people in my town growing up. I mean, who am I to be able to do what God is saying to do? And then to actually have to put on paper, online, what God says I'm going to do was like, I don't, I don't think I can do it. It really was so challenging to my heart. So I want to put that question to you. Do you believe what God says about you? We can relate to his challenge to Moses. Mm. Mm -hmm. How does... Go ahead. Moses' response initially was, who am I? That's right. I'm not eloquent. And he was in good company, you know? A lot of the prophets had all of these things that they questioned, but yet Moses, as we're, we're studying him on, on Sundays, led the people of Egypt, of Israel, children of Israel, out of bondage. This one man who happened to have murdered someone, led the, and he was an orphan, <laughs> basically, you know? Um, there's an interesting teaching with why did God want Moses to lead the children of Israel? Why did Moses need to be sent down the Nile, rescued by the daughter of Pharaoh, and raised in a palace, and God chose him? God needed a king. He needed someone who didn't know what it was to be like a slave, but knew how to live as a king. When I first heard that, I went, 
Wow. That's powerful. And so we're sons and daughters of the Most High God, daughters of the King. We are royalty. That's who you are. <laughs> yes, royal priesthood. You are chosen. You are picked, selected. And <laughs> there is no one else that can do what God has called you to do. There is no one else. It's your, he has planned your purpose before the foundations of the World. He has prepared a good work for you. There's this translation that I love that says his masterpiece. Yeah, that's the word in the good poem. Poem. That's the word in the good poem. Wow, you're his poem. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you are, and you know it. You are. <laughs> Wow. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Whew. <laughs> okay, so we're going to play a game. Um, I'm just going to go a little bit again into the prophetic because we're taking a risk. Now, first of all, I want you to feel a little bit secure in who you are, okay? Because prophesying is going to be new to some of us to prophesy over people. And when it slightly scares you, am I okay, Bill, with this? Okay, when it slightly scares you, I just want to tell you that you can speak, how many of you can speak a word of encouragement? Okay? If you don't feel like you have a word from the throne room of God, Give a word of encouragement, because that's out of the redemptive nature of God, okay? That's out of love. But we are going to play a game, because most of us have probably completed the prophetic class upstairs, hopefully. Um, if not, we're going to just go for it anyway. And we're going to um, close off the camera for a minute. We'll be back 